Hey guys, Scott, Scott's Reviews. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about my vacation and the cameras I brought with me and which ones I use, which ones I didn't use much of. Well, the results at the end, just because it's a fun camera doesn't mean it's gonna have the best results or the results you're looking for. So let me just go over the cameras I did bring. The Insta360 GO 3, the DJI Action 4, the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, and the a7r5 is that it one two three oh no and the pocket three how can i forget that one so i'm gonna talk about each camera i'm gonna go over some of the positives some of the negatives of, of how my trip went what i used the most of and i'll show you some video as we talk about each so let's talk about first the insta360 go 3. All right, here's the Go 3, just have it out of the case. Now, what is this camera good for? It can do a lot of things where most cameras can't do. You can put it on your shirt, your pendant, you can put it on your hat. Uh, you can turn off the light so it doesn't indicate that you're actually filming. And it's just one of those cameras that you can go anywhere and catch those moments that you would not normally get because you don't want to pull your camera out. That's for me what it's good for. If you look back at my videos, I did not like it at the beginning and then it grew on me later on after getting it in black and I've been using it a lot since. It's one of these cameras that you can take with you and not really think about. You can have it mounted to your chest and no one really knows it's there. You forget it's there, but it's always there when you need it to have it on the go. So I said the same thing about the Action 2 when it came out when it comes to vacation stuff. This is a camera that you can put on your chest with the neck mount and just leave it there. So as you walk around, no one's really going to notice too much, unless they know cameras. Good morning again, everyone. Um, going to be a full flight again down to Jacksonville. And for the aircraft, once you do find your sheet, you can always have it right there. And then when something you want to film comes along, you can reach up to your chest, hit the button, and start recording. You can pull it off your chest, do whatever, get your video, and then put it back on. So that way, it's always kind of there and easy to use real quick get the shot and move on versus having to say oh grab my camera bag get out my camera let's go and then back in the camera bag again please throw those small bags under your seats please i appreciate all the help we get in boarding quickly with all of our connecting customers thank you you could argue you can argue that you could do the same thing with the go four sorry with the action four in your pocket but you're still having to pull it out you can get it mounted here but everyone's going to kind of see this device more than they would see this little guy right here i did use this camera a lot more i think more than any other camera in the bag because it was with me a lot more of the times than the other cameras were so did it deliver awesome results well no it's the worst image quality of all these cameras until they put this into a 4k which i think hopefully the next one will be 4k they may have to make it a little bit bigger but until that happens the image quality is going to be 2.7k at the best very small sensor bad in low light but it's the butt it's those shots that you can't normally grab that you can add to your videos and my example has always been walking through the airport checking in, putting your bag tags on. Now don't walk through security because I don't like that. But wherever you are in the airport, you got your luggage, you got your bags with you, you may have you dealing with your kids. This can be mounted on your chest, recording it as you go, capturing everything, and then later you can go into the app and then take what you want from those clips and use it in your video. Going down the jetway of an aircraft, uh, go boarding the aircraft. Um, if you had grabbed one of these or something like this, they are small, but people are going to notice you when you're filming down, walking through the fuselage of the aircraft. It's just unwanted or unneeded attention that you really don't want to deal with. This is what makes this camera fun. And that is the main benefit that everyone will say about the Go 3 is the versatility of the camera. Those are the shots you can add real quick to your videos to kind of give it that 
story effect um, versus just shot at the beach, shot at the dinner table, shot at, in the hotel room. This could kind of add getting oh, to the, like you the watched the Casey Neistat videos, them getting into the car, going to the next spot. It's that travel feel of a vlog feel where you're going to the next spot and how did they get there? What was it like? This is it. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> you're bringing your audience on the journey with you. Old beater. This is it. Right here. And this makes it easier capturing those little shots. Now, it's not going to be like the best quality, but you have the shot and it's not that bad. Your audience is not going to be like, ooh, that was bad image quality. They're going to fall into the storyline, see you getting into the car, and then not pay attention. Did you enjoy that? And then when you get to the other spot, maybe you do use a, a better image quality camera to get a headshot, talking shot, or, or a view of your scenery kind of background look. Those are the kind of things you can think about when you go on your trip. So this is the, the Go 3. That is the action for getting a kind of static shot. I am happy with the Go 3. I've used it more than, than any camera I brought on this trip. So it's telling me something. Now whether the footage looks great or not, remain to be seen. All right, that's the Go 3. We'll put that aside. Let's talk about the Action 4. Now the Action 4 is your all around average GoPro style of action camera. Great image quality, great for the pool. great for snorkeling, all that kind of stuff around the water, rugged, very small, can fit in your pocket, on the go, ready to go, all that stuff. I've added uh, ND filters to these. I am really liking the image quality coming out of this camera with the ND filter. Uh, I love the skin tones out of this camera versus the Insta360. All right, welcome to the Magic Kingdom on the Action 4 with the ND filter on. So the Action 4 is definitely a better camera than the Go 3. Not too bad crowds. I've seen a lot more packed than this. Uh, it's just a nice all around camera. And right now, these cameras are very, very cheap for cameras these days. $299, I think it's, it's the price. I'll put up on the screen what it's currently selling for. We all know the Action 5 is coming out sometime this year. So what would that be? Uh, I don't know. It's already got a pretty big sensor inside of it. So we'll see what they do with the 4K. They bump it up to 5.7K or something like that to kind of compete with the competition out there. We're headed over to the Grand Floridian workout room. Emma's gonna work out. I'm gonna continue on the Magic Kingdom. I'll show you that. And uh, we'll be back up. Uh, it's got the magnetic bottom, so easy mounting, all that stuff. I do absolutely love this camera. I love the image quality out of it. So it's kind of like my next step. When I'm going out to go out to the pool, and I'm like, all right, uh, how much do I want to put into this? Do I want just a quick shots with this thing and not worry about it? Or do I want something a little bit better going down the slide, something like that, and I would grab this. But I love the contrast colors with the Action 4. It is a very good image quality action camera, no doubt. And the stabilization is perfect. Okay, love it. Here we go, the ZV-1 Mark II. Um, I love the ZV-1 lines. I had the ZV-1, I had the ZV-1F. I did a lot of reviews on that. Not a great camera, but the ZV-1 Mark II. When you use a lot of these action cameras and you get used to this stabilization, like the Pocket 3 stabilization, and when you use something like this, you're like, whoa, wow, that's bad. So the stabilization on this is not good. 
so don't expect it to walk around and get casual shots like this as we walk. They will be bumpy, they will be jarry, they will be unpleasant to watch at times. But headshots with this thing. The first day here at the Embassy Suites. Let's go get to Salt Light to get some lunch. On a tripod. Getting a shot of the background, getting a shot of the beach, doing a time lapse, stuff like that. One inch sensor, great image quality. Do like it. I use this camera now more for top down shots for product video stuff. So I have a place right above me. I can easily mount this, set it up, and it gets good open boxing product showcase stuff with this camera. Uh, I do have it for sale on eBay, so it's the only camera of the group that I do have for sale. So if it does sell, great. If it doesn't, then I'll keep using it as a top-down camera. Pictures are probably the next best thing for it, so taking pictures with this camera is really nice. Very fast frames per second. You could use this as a street photography camera. Maybe it's not like a Ricoh GR3 or a Leica, but it's a one inch sensor. Uh, you can do a tap. So I'm hitting the back of the screen and it focuses and taps. So uh, you can just look around point, hit you what you want to take a picture of and tap all day long. Of all the cameras that I had with me, is there one I, had to, I can get rid of? This will be the guy that I wouldn't need I can get rid of. It's interesting where Sony's gonna go with this line of camera. I kind of think that this line has kind of had seen its day and where they need to focus their energy is now uh, a better like RX 100 point and shoot camera because those seem to be the latest and greatest of what people want. They want a high image quality small compact camera that's better than their phone for their instagram shots all that kind of thing and that's why the fuji cameras are going wild the ricos are up in price again and there's a, there's a hunger for that style of camera sony kind of backed off that for a while thought that the rx100 line was kind of like dead nobody wants it anymore who wants point and shoots when they had their cell phones but we're seeing a regeneration of want for that kind of point and shoot camera so would this fulfill that need, point and shoot? For some people, maybe. I would wait and hold off to see what Sony's about to do. when they, If they continue with the RX100 line, I think they need to go above the one inch sensor marked. I think you need to kind of step up your game on that point. I don't think the shallow depth of field is good enough uh, for what people want uh, out of this kind of sensor here. They're gonna have to go with the APS-C line of uh, sensors to put into a point and shoot like this. I would love to see a APS-C point and shoot and then a full frame point and shoot. That's this camera. Any more questions about this thing, let me know, but not the best one to take on vacation to get all your shots. Not the best. So the Pocket 3 is, you've seen the videos for it. I have the combo packet, which is you have to get the combo pack. I didn't really use the microphone since it was vacation, kind of like casual. I didn't really find it necessary to use the microphone. So it's there if you need it in that kind of situation, you want to get great audio. This guy is a, is a, it's a beast, man. It's just an all in one gimbal, one inch sensor camera. It's basically putting this camera on a gimbal with its sensor. And then there you go. How'd I use it on my vacation? I didn't use it as much as I thought I was. Reason being is because I had these other cameras to use that I didn't have to worry about pulling it out of the case, flipping it open, being worried about the gimbal. That's laziness to me. It is. It is laziness. I got lazy with those cameras, put it in your pocket, film it, and put it right back in your pocket again. This takes a little bit more of a getting it out. It's a little bit bigger, putting it back in correctly to make sure you don't damage the, the gimbal. Walked around college campuses.
walked around uh, different buildings that were touring. So I was able to take this out, film as I walked, and then you get that large sensor image quality with perfect stabilization in a small package. And it's small enough that fits in your camera bag very easily. This guy will never be sold until the next and greatest one comes out. If you do any type of cruise trips, that kind of thing, where you go on tours and you visit museums and all that kind of stuff, this is a great camera to have to get those shots as you walk through areas. <laughs> Could you board a plane with this thing? Yes, absolutely. No one's gonna really notice it too much. Kind of leave it right here. Have your bag on. Aloha. Hi. Yes, my party. Hi. Okay, thank you. A lot better image quality. I could tell you that from the Go 3, but it just takes a little bit more planning on your part. This is small stuff, right? This is a, not really a complaint, but this is just a thing you have to th think about. When I'm walking around with this and then the kids start crying, I need to do something. I can't just throw this in my pocket. I have to shut it off, let the gimbal shut down, put it in here and then go into the pocket. And then my hands are back free again versus an action four, something like that, click. Film, click, back in pocket, here we go. We talk about it, it sounds like a problem you don't really need to mention, because it sounds stupid. But in real life, when you actually have the ability to choose, you do think about that, That like, like you know what? I need to use my hands, I wanna get the shot, let me not worry about getting all that gimbal out, let me just get the action forward and go for it. It is your vacation video, it doesn't have to be the best thing in the world. Like you don't need all these cameras to make a vacation video. I'm just showing you how I use them and where they kind of came to play for me. The big camera I took and I knew that, I even debated not taking the, the A7R5, but I got a beautiful lens for it. I'm like, I paid all this money for it. So why in the world would I leave it home and use other stuff like this? So I brought it with me and I did, I, I enjoyed using it. I used it around uh, Grand Floridian during Easter, to take pictures. So it's gonna give you those beautiful photo, portrait videos, landscape videos, unbelievable large sensor, I can crop in all day long. So when I go out to take dedicated pictures, I will definitely grab this camera and this lens and have a field day with it. I only brought one lens with me. I didn't bring a telephoto. I just brought the 16-35 2.8G Master Part 2. And I really do like this lens. The in-body image stabilization is really good. It blows this guy away. So I can walk around handheld uh, with active stabilization on and just do handheld and it looks really smooth. It's not like the Pocket 3 smooth, but if you keep your hand steady and keep your, your, your core centered as you walk and do video, it looks really good. It's pretty smooth without having to do any type of image stabilization in post. I really am enjoying the setup I have right now. Uh, with the Go 3 Action 4, ZV-1 Mark II, Pocket 3, and the big camera. Uh, it doesn't take too much of a space, but I don't bring any lenses. So, yeah, I had one bag, one backpack, and that's it. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about these cameras, leave it in the comments below. I will 
get to them as fast as I can. But you guys have a great day and...